you're probably wondering what I'm doing in the kitchen with these three items. Not a battery, battery jumper cables, and a compressor. Once I explain to you, it'll be perfectly logical. Well, let me rewind a little bit. Hopefully you can hear me over the AC. But about three years ago, we got one of these, we got one of these installed. What it is, it's a water softener. So it's a column of resin, sand, charcoal. Basically makes your water softer because our water was incredibly hard. That right there, that's a salt thing. That's where the brine or salt water resides. Not too long ago, this head unit this head unit right here went bad and needed to be replaced because it was acting at a predetermined hour the whole system backwashes basically flushes itself out to clean it so it can you know produce more clean water that thing went bad was completely busted the valve was stuck open which was basically acting as it, it was stuck in the flushing mode and so God, the company, needless to say that the company leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to customer service. Uh, long story short, the head unit got replaced, although I was kind of bummed out because they replaced, replaced it with the analog unit as opposed to, to the digital where uh, I could monitor all the different uh, characteristics and the modes and whatever was happening to the unit. But shortly after that, shortly before that actually, let me go back to the kitchen. Shortly before that, the water that comes out of here, the purified clean water would just start to trickle. The tang that's underneath the cabinet right here is supposed to hold about five gallons worth of water. But when I turn it on right now, it goes strong for a little bit. And then it just kind of dies down. And to fill up even a cup of water takes forever. For a while, we were trying to figure out what's wrong with it. But then I discovered that it actually has a valve right here, which resembles that of a bicycle, bicycle valve right here. So I put a pump to it. Pumped, pumped it up with a bunch of air, and what do you know, the water worked again. The thing is, now I gotta do it every so often, about once every month, to keep it at a steady pressure, steady PSI. I don't think the tank's been compromised in any way. It looks pretty intact. There's no, there's no water leakage anywhere. So I just figured it's sort of, you know, the system just eating up the air somehow. So every once in a while, I'll just fill it up with air and the water works again. And that's where this setup comes in handy. The reason why I'm using an automotive system is because I got an auto compressor. Therefore, I need an auto battery and then jumper cables. And it's done like this. I usually use this battery for weather projects that I'm currently working on, be it the lights on the truck. So this is the battery that I kind of test out everything on. So I just use this battery. So if you got one of these compressors like I do, it's very simple. This end right here fits the fits the valve on the body of the tank perfectly. So. Anyway, so jumper cables right here. Plus, what? Nothing. Go away. Just making sure you get the work done right. 12 volt car plug. Basically, these two prongs right here on the side, that's your negative. This little nipple in the front is your positive. Make sure you clamp it good. All right. Now. Like I said.
said before. You just grab the vent. You grab the vent, put it on there, clamp it down, and let's go. Actually, I need to make sure that I'm pumping the right PSI amount in it. I don't want it to blow off on me or anything. All right, so this thing says maximum working pressure is 100 PSI. So I'm not gonna go over that. I'm gonna give it enough air so that the water just, you know, once you turn on the tap, it just keeps going, doesn't die out like I showed you. So. All right, shows me 100 PSI right now when the water shut off. So I'm assuming that's where it needs to be. And if I turn on the tap, see how it's still, still going? That's how it should be at any given time. But like I said, every once in a while, I need to resurface it and give it more air because this thing collects air as well as all the filtered water that's in it. And then the compressed air that I just pumped into it pressurizes the water and when I open the tap, the air pushes the water through the ducts and that's how you get clear water. So that's a fix. opinion a worthy investment because what we started seeing right after the installation of the system was I mean obviously the water was cleaner tastier the laundry started coming out you know as it should clean with no spots there's no deposit on the water pipes the faucet you know the dishwasher cleans better there's no residue of the minerals or anything like that on it. So I think it's pretty worth it. So that was one of my one of my best friends. He called me up. It was kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing, but he was uh, driving by my house, so he hit me up, chatted up for a while, got to hang out and such. So I think I'm going to end the night in this week's vlog with a calf workout that I found on the internet. It's a guy that I've been following for like eight years now. His workouts are pretty, pretty spot on. I mean, uh, they're incredibly effective to the point and really intensive workouts. And I just like how varied um, the workouts are. I mean, there's there's just a variety, huge variety of worka workouts that will keep you on your toes and it's just not the same old and it works. So I think it's gonna be a calf workout for tonight and then I'm just gonna call it a day. Alright, so I'm out here in the backyard, ready to do my calf workout. The guy that I was talking to you about, um, that I'm going to emulate the workout off of is, his name is Jeff Cavalier. He owns his program, it's called it's it's called AthleanX.com. And I'm not paid to uh, say any of this, it's just I've been following his workouts for so long, they've become effective, they've practically become my routine, my go-to workouts. What I'm gonna do right now uh, is not gonna be exactly what he showed uh, for the calf workout because there's a there's a part of it that I can't really do right here, but uh, I'm gonna do the rest of it, tweak it a little bit uh, so it works. It's a six minute workout, it's very intensive, and um, that's why I like his uh, six minute 
soaring six minute series, not for the shortness uh, of the workouts, but for the intensity of them. I mean, they they just get you burning quick, and uh, you get your you get your workout on quick and effectively. So let's get it going. So I basically outfitted my Walmart dumbbell here with as much weight as I can, so I can weight down my thigh, uh, my calves a little bit. Um, so I put that together, and uh, basically it's going to be a variation of calf raises. So let's get going. All right. So real quick, the reason why I have these two plates down here is to kind of stand on it. Uh, so my calves can get uh, a little bit more extended uh, when I go up and down. You literally need about six minutes for this sort of workout because like I said it's incredibly intensive but that's all you need you know when you can overload it so much that it's so intensive the amount of time that you got to put into it assuming that you do quality reps decreases drast drastically but you got to make sure that you really work it out I can tell you right now my calves are so burning right now they're pumped up ready to explode so I know it's working All right about six minutes and that's all you need to absolutely destroy your calves like I said this workout it's, it's not I don't mean to claim it as my own Jeff Cavalier athleanax.com and you can take this for whatever free advertisement it is but like I said no endorsement here it's just I really do enjoy his work and I think he should be credited for what he does every day. It's definitely helped me over the years, as it did thousands of other people. I know that for a fact. So, yeah, I think that's it for tonight and for this week. Catch you next week.